All right, folks, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. I'm joined here with Peanut and Coconut today. And we're looking at a lovely filtered picture of my truck doing donuts out on some country road I don't even remember the name of. And we're here today for part two of what you should buy. This is uh, the stage two, what I would consider the max effort NA build. Um, I often get asked after I do these videos, hey, can you do one for something that you didn't talk about? I'm not going to go any further with NA because in my opinion, it's just simply not worth the money and the effort. At this point, at this power level, what will hold you back is the cylinder heads. Um, and it's not worth the money to, you know, if you have a small bore engine, a 4A to 53 to upgrade to like some PRC heads for $1,500 just to squeak another 30 or 40 horsepower out of it. Um, if you have a large bore, a four inch bore, a six liter like I do, it seems like the going rate, I could probably get a set of rectangle port heads on Daryl for around 800 bucks nowadays. Um, and that would probably bump me up to close to 475 tire, which is almost tempting, but I'm just not quite there yet. So. This build should lay down somewhere between 375 and 400 tire. Dinos are tricky. That's why we don't race them. People lie. Um, but it will be a better build. And this is the foundation that I would recommend you go on if you're going to spray it later or if you're going to boost it later, which is literally this is the combination that is in my truck. And that's why I called it back to basics. So let's get started. Let's get into it. All right, so like it says, you know, this should be 375 rear wheel horsepower. Uh, it'll still run on pump gas. It'll still drive nice. Over the summer, I drove Daryl to work, I don't know, half a dozen times. It's about 125 mile round trip. I went down the freeway, the converter locked. I went 75, 80 miles an hour. No problem. It's like 2400 ish RPM for me. Um, all this stuff assumes that you have like some kind of two wheel drive car or truck with a roughly 27, 28 inch tall tire on it. Um, if you have some three quarter ton suburban with forties, you know, your, your recommendations will change, but this is for like street car, street truck, little hot rod hooligan stuff with this. You, you can still run pump gas. You will need valve springs. You will need a converter. You should really have a gear. Um, I drove around in Daryl with 308s and it was kind of hilarious. I'm kind of more willing to deal with stuff than other people. Um, if you don't have a converter with a cam this size though, you're going to have a miserable time driving. It won't do a burnout. It won't really come alive till you hit three grand. Um, then it'll take off like a rocket, which can be funny, but not really optimal. My truck's really a pleasure to drive and it lights the tires like you saw in that picture at will with no brake. I'd just stab it and do that. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and this is where I settled on getting my truck running with this combination before I added the turbo back in so I could get all the uh, kinks worked out of it. All the, you know, weird idle surges and, and dying when you hit the brakes and all that kind of crap. That's all worked out of my truck now. My truck runs, it locks the converter, it does everything it should do. It basically runs like a hot rotted, you know, 1999 Silverado. So uh, it runs the way the SS should have from the factory. And now I'm ready to step up and add the turbo again. Um, because not everybody wants to deal with all that complication out of the gate. So up first, your fuel pump, the same Kemso 340 liter per hour. Uh, fuel pump, you can find them on eBay. They're everywhere. They're roughly 30 bucks. I have one of these in my daily driver Silverado. I have one of these in Daryl. They're both a couple years old. The one in Daryl hasn't seen a lot of runtime, but the one in Clifford's 60, 70,000 miles, um, they work great. They provide plenty of fuel at this power level. There's no reason to go with anything else. Um, if you're going to ask me about external fuel pumps. I'm not going to recommend one. I already did a video on why you don't want one. I'd recommend you, you know, you go watch that. Uh, for injectors here, you're probably going to want to step up to something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to step up to an aftermarket injector. The stock flex injectors from the uh, L59s, any, any Tahoe Yukon that you can find with a yellow cap, 
will have these 31 pound injectors in them. So they're about eight pounds. I forget off the top of my head what the stock ones are. I think they're 21 or 23. But anyway, these flow a little more. 8.1 liter injectors flow like 28 pounds an hour, but 8.1s are pretty rare. I've never seen one in the junkyard. I've seen the hole where one was at, but they, they don't last a lot, very long. Because of the value, they're worth about a thousand bucks, so people snatch them. Uh, the cam, I've done multiple, multiple videos on this. I can't seem to get it through people's heads. Anything over 600,000 is a lift. Not only are you running into a situation where you need more expensive springs and you're probably going to get into a reduced base circle cam, then you're going to need push rods. So there's another 130, 140 bucks expense. Um, not only all of that, you're just out, you're out lifting what the heads can flow. And that's not a recommendation, again, to run out and buy some TEA ported 1500 hour PRC, hell yeah, brother heads. Because that makes no sense. You, you're going to, if you ran like an MS4 cam and a set of PRC heads and you got an LQ4 up to 475, you'd get smoked by a guy with a stock LQ4 and a GT45 turbo for 160 bucks. And I would feel stupid. I don't know, you know. I guess you'd be able to go, well, at least I did it all motor. I know I built engine properly. The proper, everything's proper for me. Whatever. Just stay under 600 thou. Uh, the Elgin 18, all these prices fluctuate constantly. So the Elgin 1840 is hard to beat. Um, the Summit 87, at, if it's under 250 bucks, and I'll show you that in a second. The Summit 8706 is also a good cam. It's not going to make a significant amount of power more than the Elgin. There's no reason to choose it unless you have Summit bucks or there's a sale or you got a rebate. Um, anything that's around 230 bucks and ha are around 230 degrees of duration at 50 and has somewhere between 575 and 600 thousandths of lift for under $250 is going to get you where you want to go, period. It's going to get you where you want to go NA, and when you boost it, it's going to go faster. I don't know how else, how would that react to boost? Hmm. By going fucking faster. It's such a ridiculous question. And, and I heard that cam loves boost. All cams love boost. You're jamming air through them, and that totally overcomes any deficiency in the port, in the cam, in the valve size, because you're forcing air through its forced induction. Come on, people. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the cams real quick here. If we go on eBay, this one's $238.80. I think that's exactly what I paid. This one's $249. This one's $265. 239, 265. Um, this one comes with springs. I don't know what that means, but I just don't buy the off-brand ones. People have like the white box China ones. I've seen people measure. I've seen way more people measure them as stock than I've seen have success. Uh, the Pac-1218 valve springs to go with either one of those cams. You shouldn't pay more than 150 bucks. Uh, apparently I didn't do a generic search. These go up and down. Prices fluctuate on these two, especially with COVID and, and shortages and everything. You see they're 145, 145, 145. These are 156 because profit's not a crime. These are 195. If your dumbass buys them, that dude's going to pocket 50, 60 bucks. Hell, he can buy these and sell them for that. And if you buy them, so be it. That's Jared's. Ha ha. That's funny. Anyway. Uh, go with a seller that has some real feedback. Um, Glenn's auto performance here, uh, gap because you're gonna gap a motherfucker. They're they're pretty solid, even though they're more than I said to pay. Um, when these show up, they should be in a branded box. Same with the cam. When the cam shows up, it should be in a blue box with uh orange writing on it. They don't have a picture of it here. I'll, I'll Google it for you real quick. See if I can come up with a picture. They look like this. If your cam shows up and it's not in a box like this, it's in a plain white box, it's fake. Send that shit back. Um, so, yeah. And don't get hung up on the brand and, and the freedom and the stages and, and how many bald eagles are shooting out of the fucking thing and how much unicorn horn it's infused with. 
stick with these specs for, for this level of build and you'll have a good time. And you'll be able to make well over 600 horsepower with a turbo to the tires too. Um, on the converter front, you're going to need a converter. It's going to have to be over 3000 RPM. I would really leave it to, to the company that you go with to recommend exactly what converter you get. I think I have a 3600 RPM converter. Mine is from Florida Torque Converter. Um, it's this converter right here. You can get it from a gentleman named Ryan Jans. He's in my Facebook group, the Driveway Engineer on Facebook. I believe he's in the Sloppy Mechanics groups as well. Um, I paid around $550 for this shipped to my door, which is an outstanding deal. Um, the Circle D converters that everybody used to go with, they're a little more expensive. They're a larger hub. I don't think that I would go with them for a 4L80. For other makes and models, you still want to be above, or models of transmission, you still want to be above 3,000 RPM at least. Mine's either 34 or 3,600 RPM because I think giant converters are funny. And when they lock, it doesn't matter. It takes all of that out of the equation. I get up to 50, 55 miles an hour, my converter locks. And I just idle down the road like everybody else. Um, for gears, you're going to want gears, especially like my truck had 308s in it. It's just, you know, it's not a heavy truck. But if you have like a G body with like 226 gears in it, or I think they came with like 255s or something. I don't know. They were stupid tall. Um, Fox bodies were often 273s and 308s. You're going to want more gear than that. And what all I would do anymore, I tried to go down the road of setting up my own gears and it was a debacle. And I paid way more than I would have out of the junkyard. And I should have just stuck with the junkyard will provide because the junkyard will provide 8.8s, 975s. If you have like a, a later model GM truck, a lot of those come with 373s. You can go find them in the junkyard if you want to stick with a 10 bolt. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd rather do the welding, but whatever. And that's it. That's our whole show for today. Um, so yeah, that stuff all in comes to about $1,500. Um, and, and most of it, again, it's a converter for 550 bucks. You got, now you're at 650 here with the springs um with the cam you're at 900 so i guess it comes to about probably 1200 dollars um and it'll get you to roughly if you have a six liter you should be able to get to about 400 tire if you have a five three or four eight you'll be a little lower 375 480 i just dropped a screw into my keyboard son of a bitch anyway hopefully that helps you out gets you along the road uh down the road my further builds with uh, NA or nitrous that I do in these videos, I'm going to do one a week. They'll be based on this stage two build. Not that you can't add boost to the stage one build. You can. Um, the stage two is just a better foundation, mainly because of the cam and the converter. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you out, helps you sort some of this stuff out. And if you have any questions, you know, drop them down below or see me on Facebook. And we'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer. Also, this video is three times longer than five minutes, so if you stuck around to the end, thank you.